You did. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Cheryl Lee Davis, and I'm the Vice President of Women's Connections with Stonecroft Ministries. And this is our Stonecroft Christian Women's Club uh, training on prayer. What a wonderful topic to experience some training on. And I want to welcome all of you. And today, our training objective is, you know, your group is effective because you first pray. So this call will review and encourage all things prayer. But first, let me talk to you a little bit about our theme this year. We like to do this on all of our calls because um, this is a theme that as Stonecroft volunteers, we're going to sink deep in this year, and it is awaken. What a beautiful word, right? And we're, we're meant uh, going deep in Matthew chapter 9, 36 through 38. And this is how it reads. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest, who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his field. And I have a feeling that on this call on prayer, many of you are doing that in, regularly in your prayer life because of your commitment to prayer. And we just believe this year that God is doing an awakening work in each of us individually by his Holy Spirit, and we are asking him to wake up those who need him most, those without him and those who have not yet received his invitation to be part of his family. Well, today our featured guests to help us with this topic of prayer are uh, Lynn Cayley. She's a district consulting coordinator uh, right here, uh, not here, but in Illinois. <laughs> Melanie Soper, an area representative from Colorado, and Terry Brown, a Stonecrop Regional Administrator uh, from Wisconsin. And then finally, our very own Merrill Bishop. Many of you may not know Merrill Bishop uh, was formerly a Stonecrop staff member for many years, I think 27, 28 years, but has really been involved in the ministry for probably more like 36 or 38 now, right? And uh, anyway, she was our Stonecrop National Prayer Consultant. And now as a volunteer for the ministry, she supports the ministry in prayer and encouragement to you all. So let's get started and hear from Meryl Bishop. Good evening, everyone. One of my most favorite verses is found in James 5, verse 16. And I really like the translation of Eugene Peterson's in the message. And this is how it reads, the prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. Isn't that a great verse? And I am here today in the United States of America, originally from South Africa, as a result of prayer. I have seen, experienced, and I know that prayer works. I have learned that prayer is not just getting things from God, but prayer grows and develops my relationship with Him. Oswald Chambers states it so well. We look at prayer as a means of getting things for ourselves. The Bible idea of prayer is that we may get to know God himself. When I arrived in Kansas City in July of 1980, I was to learn even more about prayer. I had come just to visit Stonecroft to find out how it operated. Why had it been so well received in South Africa? What was the secret? of its effectiveness. My very, first, my very first day, I learned that prayer is the secret of Stonecroft Ministries. I'm so glad that the God who had been teaching me so much about prayer led me to a ministry with prayer as its heartbeat. As prayer is the key to the success of Stonecroft, it will be the success of your local groups and the success in your own spiritual growth. You can have a great place to meet, plan the best programs, but if you don't take time to pray, you are wasting your time. During my years of involvement with Stonecroft, I heard these quotes repeatedly. This ministry was founded on prayer, is maintained by prayer, and moves forward by prayer. I also heard we are in outreach to the unreached within reach through the upreach of prayer. And planning team members and volunteers were offered a piece of pie, a reminder to pray 
invite, expect. Nowadays, we probably will have new quotes covering prayer, but over 75 years later, these quotes are still true. We do need to pray, invite, and expect God to do some great and mighty things. Through your involvement with Stonecraft, you have the incredible opportunity to grow in your own prayer life and also to encourage women to grow in their prayer lives. In order for your prayer times to be effective, your own heart preparation is vital. You won't have a passion for your position until you have a passion for God. Prayer is a love relationship with the Lord. Take time with God first to make your prayer connection material or any devotional or thoughts that you're going to be sharing with your groups. Take time first to let that material become a part of you and become real to you. Take time to first worship him, seeking his face, what he means to you before seeking his hand, what he can do for you. Let him speak to you. Let him give you a vision of what he can accomplish in your area through prayer. Jill Briscoe reminds us that prayer is not something you do, it's where you go. And she also says words that have worshipped will always work. As Corrie Ten Boom once asked, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? It is wonderful to have extended times of prayer for special needs, but what the Lord desires of us is a daily walking with and talking to him. By her question, is prayer your steering wheel or spare tire? She challenges us to enjoy a daily intimate relationship with the Lord and not only call upon him in a time of crisis. Sidlow Baxter, um, who has now since passed on, and was a great theologian and pastor, had this incredible quote, which has really meant a lot to me. And this is what he's written. Men may spurn our appeal, reject our message, oppose our argument, despise our person, but they are helpless against our prayers. So let's take the advice of Colossians 4, verse 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful, and thankful because the prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. And also because, as I saw the sign on a church recently, prayer is the world's greatest wireless connection. And now Melanie is going to be sharing with us some answers to prayer that they have experienced in their area. Melanie? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, excellent. I want to make sure I had unmuted myself. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me be a, a part of this, uh, part of Stonecroft, so many entities um, that are so exciting. And just a couple of things that have been going on out here in my corner of the world. I am in Colorado, as they mentioned, and I'm an area rep over two groups. We have a day group and an after five, and they meet on the same day. And our challenge in a small town is that there just aren't very many locations for us to meet. We had found a really great one about two and a half years ago and found out about four months ago that they were going to be closing down. So thankfully, we had a little bit of time to figure out the move. Um, but we were reticent to try to, we just, we've looked before. And it's, it's just a difficult task in a small town um, to find a place that can suit the needs of both groups. So we looked around. And as um, we were merging out of the old place. Um, things looked like this. When we first started with that location that we were moving out of, we had a really great meal price, eight fifty for a full buffet, um, tax and tip and everything all inclusive. And then um, it jumped about 18 months ago to um, $13 a person. And it was just a huge leap. And we thought, are we going to lose half of our ladies? What's that going to look like? Um, but the Lord was good, and our ladies stayed, and we had some generous donors who helped defray some of the expenses. So we were uh, charging enough to cover the meal, but nothing above and beyond that for our speaker or any other expenses we might incur, although they are usually very low. There are still, obviously, expenses involved. So the Lord covered that this whole 18 months. It was really an incredible thing. Well, as we were looking, again, we uh, realized that with that limited amount of 
opportunity, um, we looked at a place that we hadn't really thought of before. And it's actually a restaurant that's in the basement of an old church. But in the upper part, which I believe was probably the former sanctuary that's been redone, um, is a meeting room. And so one of my board members said, oh, isn't that so cool? We get to bring the church back to the church. So they have welcomed us with open arms. Um, they have dropped our meal price back down to $10. And our after five had struggled in numbers throughout the last six or seven years. They can be as low as 13, 14 ladies on an, any given Tuesday night. Um, or we can swell up to the, into the 30s. So we had asked the Lord, could, could we just go in with a bang to this new location? Well, our meetings were last Tuesday. And as I mentioned, they were just, it just seemed like everywhere we went, someone was starting a spiritual conversation from the waitress who was helping serve us um, to the owner of the restaurant. Everybody just said, this is just so great what you're doing, this encouraging of women, this connecting um, of people in our community. They were just so ecstatic for us to be there. And so our day group was about its normal number, which is around 40. But we had seven first-time guests and one brave man in the room. And then for the after five, I had sort of opened it up and said, we'll kind of make it like a mini guest night. Then we'll let the husbands join in this time if they so desire. And so our numbers jumped um, last Tuesday night for the after five to 50 with almost 15 first-time guests and eight, eight um, brave men in the room. So it was just such a heartwarming thing to watch um, the Lord move here in Sterling and to continue to bring those that really need to hear the message the most, um, those that just don't have that relationship yet with our Lord Jesus. And he's just been so faithful to answer um, each cry of our hearts throughout these many months and now going into years of changes and ups and downs. And I know you all go through that. Um, but I hope this is a little bit of encouragement for you that um, even the little things down to um, bringing the church back to the church and having the, the waitress be super impacted by what we're doing and the owner of the restaurant just ready to bend over backwards with whatever need we could possibly have, he's there to meet it. Um, just very awesome to serve such a great God. So thank you for this opportunity to share. Thank you, Melanie. That's such an exciting story. And last year when I was in Colorado, I had the opportunity of visiting the two groups in Sterling, and they really are exciting. And they're hanging in there, and the Lord is blessing them. We're now going to be talking about prayer connections. And it has been my special privilege to have the subcommittee um, with Melanie and Terry and Lynn, and we also had Roxanne Kamachoff from New Jersey who unfortunately could not be on the call tonight or this morning. And as we discussed certain things, we came up with some top five areas for a successful prayer connection. And of course, there are much more than just five areas. But these were the key ones that we wanted to share with you. And of course, most of all, the most important, what is the purpose of a prayer connection? And it is to pray. I know sometimes I've been to prayer meetings or prayer events and people have been so busy talking about what they want to pray about that they run out of time to pray. So your purpose is to pray. And then what is also exciting about prayer connections are they give you an opportunity to do follow-up for those who have made a commitment at your meetings, those who indicate on their comment cards that they'd like to be involved in a small group. Prayer connections are a place where they can learn how to pray out aloud. And we hear stories all the time of women who say, at a Stonecroft prayer connection was where I learned how to pray out aloud because I didn't feel threatened at all. And I could either read my prayer until I had that confidence to speak it out aloud. So that's the purpose of prayer connections. And to have a really successful one, we came up with these ideas, and what has been encouraging for me, too, as I, I'm right now at the home office in Overland Park, Kansas, and as I've been looking at the prayer connection material, a lot of these suggestions that we have made have already um, been implemented. First and foremost, we do want you to use the material that comes from Stonecraft. We have writers here um, to prepare those devotionals. We have those who prepare the prayer requests. And what we have noticed, too, that they are sharing scripture-based prayer. Because we are realizing as you pray scripture back to God, you are praying back to him his promises. And you are reminding him 
of those things that he has promised to do for us. So a lot of time and trouble goes into that material and it helps you to keep focused on why you are meeting and that you are praying specifically for Stonecraft. Another thing that sometimes we find is lacking as a most important ingredient in our prayer connections is not just to go straight into prayer and asking God, but taking time to worship Him and to praise Him. And again, here too, is to pray Scripture back to Him. Scripture that reminds us of how awesome and how great He is and how interested He is that we just want to even come and spend time in His presence. And you can do that in different ways. If you want to sing praises to him, if you want to use a CD to get you into a worshipful um, mode, you can do whatever you like, but do take that time to worship and praise the Lord. And you will see that there's a change in the prayer connection material regarding that as well and bringing in worship and praise. Your prayer request should be for your upcoming outreach meeting. The Stone Stonecroft Home Office and the field staff, your local community, our country, and then personal requests. And again, the material has set out again to guide you in praying. And also you will notice that the prayer requests are written now that people can easily read them if they want to. So if you have someone who's not comfortable praying out aloud, they can just read that specific prayer request. And also, it will help you to feel that connect, especially with the Stonecroft um, Home Office and field staff, knowing what their specific functions are here at the Home Office and what their needs are. Personal requests, we don't want to not have any. But again, we just remind you to be very careful that the personal requests don't take over the whole prayer time. A lot of time is spent as people just feel the need to share all the things that they are concerned about. And if you want to know how the best way to handle that, then if you go to our resource page and our tips and tools on the website, you will get ideas on how to handle those personal requests. We also felt at the subcommittee that the social time is important, that 30 minutes either before the prayer connection or after the prayer connection where you just get to connect with each other live. So often today we're connecting through texting or email, but this is a good time just to interconnect with each other. And what one prayer coordinator does is she takes the theme from the devotional and maybe we'll start an interactive dis discussion time and take one particular word and say, what do you think this word means to you? And then you're still interacting with each other and getting to know a little bit about each other. And then on our website we have updated tips and tools, ideas that have come from around the country. And so if you have any ideas of great prayer connections or special themes that you have had, we want you to send those in to us. And then in a, later on in this phone call, Cheryl is going to be sharing with you some of the resources that are available for you to help you with your prayer ministry. And now Lynn is going to be sharing with us Stonecroft Praise and the exciting things that she has seen happening in her area. Lynn, thank you. Why? Okay, I'd like to talk to you about Stonecroft Praise. In scripture we read in Jeremiah 29.7, and <clears throat> this is in the ESV, Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. And then if you go to the NIV, it says, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city. And then it said, Because if it prospers, you will prosper. Think, this is exactly what Mrs. Baugh did so, so many years ago in San Jose. She was seeking the welfare of the city, particularly the spiritual welfare, spiritual prosperity. So, our country, community, and our citizens, and for us particularly, the women in our neighborhoods need prayer now more than ever. When we pray together for our city, we are actually praying for our country, which is made up of all of our communities, and then made up of citizens. <clears throat> in fact, we have a mandate, and you all know it, 
Second Chronicles 714, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Stonecrop has given us valuable resources to help us set up our praise groups. We have monthly devotions by Lorraine that guide us to think about and reach out to needy women around us. Who is she? Where is she? She is the woman who needs to know Christ, and she is in your community. <clears throat> Personally, I can't think of anything I would rather do than sit at a table at an outreach luncheon and help women to start Stonecroft Praise. You could have information displayed and explained. And women would have the opportunity to learn about praise and have the opportunity to join one or to start one and be matched up with others with the same burden in the same area. And you know they come from the north, south, east, and west from the outreach meetings. This would take coordination, but just think how, how much it would be worth it. Think, with our country and the condition it is now, we have that mandate to pray. And you know, ladies, we know who the women are that are ready for that task. And you know it's the Stonecroft Prayer Warriors. Uh, you may wonder why I'm so enthused about this. Uh, our local St. Charles Praise has been a special experience for me and others and the city, the others in the group, for the past three years. We have a Christian woman who is an, our alderman, not our alderman lady, who sends us prayer requests from the city council. Almost every one of these uh, asks us to pray for wisdom for the city council, and most of them deal with the moral issues. One thing that really uh, brought us together was back in 2014 when we, in 2013 and 14 when we started, we prayed for a national concern for a good part of that year. The Supreme Court was to rule on a case challenging the right to have public prayer before town council meetings. In fact, it was upstate New York and the name of the place, the city was Greece. After we prayed together, uh, and uh, after quite a few months, in May 2014, that decision by the Supreme Court of the United States was that public prayer before a council meeting does not violate the First Amendment. And uh, we don't know how long this is going to hold, but this has set a precedent for the rest of the country. So. We consider that a pretty good thing, and we really were happy about that. We kind of had a little party. <laughs> um, group members and, uh, go to a local gym, and we are praying for the owner who is an Asian Muslim. Very, very, very nice woman, lady. Um, after we started to pray, which was earlier this, week, this year, um, she had a medical scare. And I was just there at the right time when she was talking about it, and I asked her if she would like to be prayed for, and she said, yes, yes, yes. And so uh, right there on one of the uh, uh, places where we do the uh, exercises, uh, we hugged, and I prayed for her, and the tears were flowing, and she thanked me, and she said, thank you so very much. And then about three, four weeks after that, another lady in our group started talking to her about Christianity versus Muslim or uh, Islam, and uh, she told her about Jesus Christ. And they talked for about 10 minutes, and it closed, and she just locked the door, and they talked for 30 more minutes. And so we feel like our prayers are being uh, answered for her, and... Uh, God isn't finished with her yet. Uh, we really like our praise walks also. They have been special. Uh, last fall, we prayed with shop owners who were trying to liquidate their business and were having lots of trouble. And when we prayed with them, they were just really stunned and 
very, very happy to have that happen. And uh, oh, a few months later, it closed. Uh, on one of our praise walks, we sat down in a plaza, and a young woman walked up to us and spoke to us. And she saw the, cam the cam cell phones out, and she asked if she could take our photo, and she did. And she said she was new in town. It was there on a temporary job, and she was just on a break from a bank. Well, we asked to pray for her, and she said yes, and we prayed for her future and her employment and where she was going to be. And afterwards, it was interesting because she said, thank you so much for praying for me, and I'm Jewish. So you never know when a God incident is going to happen, and it's always going to be when you least expect it. One more thing we do is we stop in front of all bars and pray. Now, we don't pr pray for their success, but we do pray for the patrons and owners and for their spiritual welfare. And uh, that is, we can consider that very, very important. And it, it was kind of a strange thing to do at first, <laughs> but now we're kind of used to it. And there's about six of them, so uh, that is part of the path. So. Please go to the website for information about Stonecroft Praise. The Praise Gatherings and, and the resources for this are just there, including the prayer guide. I hope that some or many of you have been encouraged by this. Thanks for letting me share. Bye. Well, thank you. To, uh, that was really great, Lynn. And um, this is Cheryl, and I get the privilege of talking to you about the Praise Walk. And uh, many of you know this, that our Praise Walk this year is on September 24th, uh, 2016. And if you have not participated in a Praise Walk, I just really want to strongly, strongly encourage you to do that. It is fun. And as you just heard the testimonial about what God will do as you walk around and pray, perhaps in front of a bar or for a business, or maybe walking up to neighbors and asking them what they would like um, prayer for. But what we ask you to do is to register at stonecroft.org slash praisewalk. And when you do that, that lets us know what you're going to be doing in your community. And you don't have to have a large group of women. It might just be you and one other woman. Um, but you register there. And if you do that by September 12th, then you'll get some free resources and a gift. So you definitely want the gift, right? So I just want to encourage you to uh, seriously look at your calendars for September 24th and see if that would be a day that you could uh, get out and walk around your community and, um, and take your community before the Lord. And as Meryl reminded us earlier, um, to pray his promises uh, back to him. Now the neat thing is that uh, in two days on August 24th, we're going to have a conference call and you'll be able to hear Actually, there's a few conference calls coming up, but uh, this Wednesday is the first one of those conference calls on the 24th, and you can call in and hear from other um, volunteers who have held Praise Walks and some of the results they've had, plus get a, some more information about the Praise Walk. So, um, you know, at Stonecroft, we are uh, founded in prayer, and we de are dependent on prayer, and really it's, we're dependent on the Lord, right? And so this is just one more avenue for us to go to God. So I just strongly encourage you to consider the praise walk. Okay, great. Cheryl, we were just discussing this morning that if you are not able to walk, then you can have a praise, P-R-A-Y-S, drive. And you can get in your car and drive around your neighborhood and be praying wherever God wants you to. Just let him lead you. Another aspect of prayer, and hopefully by now you've gotten the message that Stonecroft really is founded in prayer, is maintained by prayer and moved forward by prayer. We have prayer connections, we have praise walks, we have stone cross praise, and then we also have calls to prayer. Now a call to prayer is usually conducted by a stone cross prayer consultant. Now the difference between a prayer consultant and a prayer coordinator is a prayer coordinator is on the planning team and she's part of the leadership team and she conducts the monthly prayer connections for your local group and for your outreach into your community. A prayer consultant is usually covers an area where there might be two or three or four or even more groups, outreach groups, Bible studies, or after fives. And she calls them together to come together to pray and to 
get connected with each other and to be praying not only for their groups and their outreach, but also for their community. Now, the prayer consultant can schedule these calls to prayer every quarter or a minimum of at least twice a year. And like I said, the purpose of that call to prayer is to just get each other to get yourselves together so that you can be praying for outreach into your community. If you don't have a prayer consultant, then your area representative can have a call to prayer or your prayer coordinator could host one. Now, it doesn't have to be a big elaborate event. Some prayer consultants like to do that, which is fine. Or you may just gather a few women together in your home or in a church facility. And as long as you're getting together to pray, and as you pray, God will work in your communities and through you. And again, on our tips and tools on the website, there will be ideas there and themes that you can use to have for your next call to prayer. And now Terry Brown from Wyoming is going to be sharing some other exciting results that she has seen with prayer in her area. Thank you, Terry. Sure. Um, I wanted to check in with our groups and see what they saw as God's hand as they have prayed in our community. We have two groups in Cheyenne. There's a morning connection group that meets every month and the after five that meets every other month. And the day group has really been praying for younger women. It's, it's a little bit older crowd, um, but they have wonderful attendance. Um, in fact, I was I walked in last week and I was number 100 and there was one seat left. And I was got the opportunity to challenge them to consider opening their home and having Bible studies um, and using their time to do something like that as the feature had talked about organizing your time and prioritizing your time. And there is one darling young gal who comes, she loves it so much, she goes to the after five and the brunch. And they are, Julie said they've got more people they're calling and they've had about 10 or 15 younger women coming and they're really trying to welcome them and, and she likes being with the um, variety of ages. So I think sometimes we need to um, be aware that not everybody just wants to be with people their age, but you don't want them to be the only one either um, in a room full of people twice their age. So that was their prayer um, need and how they're seeing God move in the area of having younger women. The After Five in Cheyenne, we went from having a $17 dinner at a hotel restaurant to there's a new kind of a conference area downtown in a historic building, and they let us use their banquet room for free. And the girls are kind of working themselves to the bone, but they let us bring our own food in, which a, a hotel restaurant would never let you do. And so we have been able to provide an outreach for $5 with dinner, no charge for the facility, and the gal that opens and closes it has a little coffee shop. So she stays there of her own volition and opens her little coffee shop so that if anyone wants a specialty coffee and they have an extra few dollars, they can do that. And there's a nursery on site. So that way, it is so much uh, more convenient for the young moms to invite them to come and to bring their children. And now we're even feeding the kids. The kids come in and eat with their mama for a little while, and then they go to the child care. And so that's been exciting. Um, one of the girls, and this is the need for the, to have some time for personal prayer requests. One of the gals, when I asked her, what have you seen God do through the prayer life of the After Five Club? And she said her son um, had kind of gotten detoured from his goal of being a biblical archaeologist while he was in college. And the girls prayed over that with her. And she said he's now having an opportunity to maybe stay with some friends near Jerusalem. And he seems to have gotten his direction back. So that's where we, we don't want the personal request to take over. But yet that's how we bond with one another when we share those things that are near our heart and we are praying for one another. Um, 
so those were some exciting things with prayer. And, and being a military town, the After Five here has been had the opportunity to try some really out-of-the-box things. And believe me, you pray with a new fervor when you have a program called Tales of the Tats and you invite people to come and share uh, the meaning and purpose behind their tattoos. And then Michelle Cartwright was here that <laughs> night when she opened it up to the audience to let them share. And my coworker had come, who I found out before she came that she's Wicca. And when she got up to share, I, you can believe there was lots of prayer happening right at the moment of the event, too. And she just shared just about how her tattoo uh, meant a lot because it was in honor of her mother-in-law. So um, we pray exciting things God is doing as we open our hands and let him fill us and fill us with his ideas. And we're challenged by some of the leadership to try something new. And they're really seeing that a, a new dimension of people the, the regulars are coming, but there's new people coming too, and we want to keep them coming back and offer Bible studies. And it's been really exciting to see what God is doing as um, we have a much less expensive venue. It's a little more work, but God is using it to draw people. There's always lots of new faces. We don't have a real big attendance. It's usually 35 or 40, but there's always new faces, and we've had lots of kids in the child care and a couple of the gals on the team are teachers and they actually put together um, some special activities for the kids so it's not just keeping them corralled but actually sharing with the children in the child care and, and, um, and, and telling them about Christ also. So those are some exciting things God is doing as we um, are just asking him to show us so that we can join him where he wants to work. Thank you so much, Terry. And um, now we're going to just transition a little bit and talk about some of the resources that you can use when you're planning your prayer connection or your praise walk or your stonecroft praise or uh, any call to prayer that you might uh, engage or even some prayer time that you might initiate with your planning team. You know, any chance that you can be in prayer. And so uh, we do have a few images. If you're watching online, you can see these. But I'm going to go through that. You know, most of you know that you can get the prayer connection. It's easy to download. And we keep uh, adding things to that. And we have the version you can look at on your, uh, your mobile device or iPad or um, that sort of thing. Or you can print it in black and white and then use it as you will at your group. Of course, our Stonecroft Bible study that's entitled Connecting with God is one of uh, my favorite Bible studies. It has uh, wonderful stories of answered prayer and also how God moves in and through us to change us through prayer. And if you know someone who maybe is figuring out who God is, this is a great Bible study for them because it introduces them to who God is through prayer. And sometimes people are interested in prayer when they're not interested even in the Bible. So I would strongly encourage you to use that resource. One of my favorite um, materials is Prayer Worth Repeating. If you have not uh, used this small group resource, I, I cannot tell you how strongly I would encourage you to use this. It was specifically written for um, women to pray for their adult children. So many of you on this call may understand what I'm talking about. If you have adult children who are away from the Lord or um, maybe don't know him at all. And um, this will inspire you and encourage you in your faith and in your prayer, but also give you um, resources on how to pray for them. And so there's scripture prayer throughout the entire study, and it's a great little resource. You can do it with um, a small group just like you would a Bible study. In that same um, style of writing, we have one for marriages, and it's called Make Us One. And that one is to uh, encourage you to pray for your marriages and especially for women to pray for their husbands. And it takes a close look at um, what God intended for marriage. And um, I think no matter how long we've been married, uh, every married uh, couple needs prayer. And this is a great resource to circle around with um, friends and maybe someone who is having some marriage struggles, but they'll get together with you and pray, even if they don't know the Lord. And in, along the way, you know what happens. God just 
reveals himself. And I'm excited to tell you that we have a third in the series coming out soon. It is called, well, right now it's called Prayer for Neighbors. I think we might call it Awaken My Heart, but don't quote me on that because we haven't made the final decision. But you can pray for us. <laughs> but uh, it's very close, and it's a beautiful, um, again, devotional with a few questions, just like the other two I mentioned, and then some wonderful prayers for your neighbors. And um, uh, the team here, the ministry support team, uh, we are doing that here in the home office and really enjoying it very much. And I have a testimony someday I'll give you on that one. And then the Be Still Prayer Journal. Many of you may remember our prayer journal from years ago. We updated it slightly. It's very, uh, you know, um, a purse size, so it'll fit right into your purse. And you can write out uh, prayers. And maybe, again, it's a great gift. And you know the gospel is included in that. And then Prayer Talking with God, that is another great booklet. It's a mini study on prayer. It also has the gospel. And that is being updated right now. So you will be able to get that here in the next few months with a brand new cover and some fresh, uh, freshened up words. I do want to encourage you to check out the prayer resources on our website. If you are a volunteer, you can access all of these. Um, just today, Meryl Bishop and myself were reviewing the um, fresh new design, the very simple new design on the Acts uh, prayer resource and the Hannah prayer resource and the praying scripture. and. So many, so many resources out there that you can then click on and download. Uh, there's a prayer calendar that should be out there soon. Many things that you can use to encourage prayer uh, with the women that you work with. So God bless you all, and, um, and we love you all, too. And I think, are we going to move into question and answer time now? Perfect. OK. So um, this has been a lot of information, and I, I do want to thank these wonderful guests that have helped us uh, this evening, but I think it was well worth the time we took. But if you have a comment or you want to share something God's doing in your area or you have a question, this is the time to do that. You just push star six on your phone, or if you're on the computer, you just have to um, push the little microphone and make it turn green, and then we just would love to hear from you. Hello. Hi, yes. Um, I was listening, and I, I did not catch the name of the devotional that was to help with prayer for our adult children. Oh, yes, wonderful. Prayer worth repeating. Three words. Prayer worth repeating. That's the name okay. of it. And you can just click on our uh, stonecroft.org slash store, and you can get a copy. It's kind of a golden golden color now with arrows. You'll see it right away. OK, thank you very much. Uh-huh. Yes, Carol, this is Linda in South Carolina. You know that we have this younger group of women who have started working with our very much senior team here. And um, I just have to tell you that as an encouragement to everybody on the line, that now on our team, the younger women outnumber the older women. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's great, Linda. And, and that's, that's an opportunity for mentoring. It is. And I think that part of the reason for that is our, our state leaders, our RST, our um, prayer consultants, and two SRAs, and our RST have all been praying together. We Every week we get on a conference call, and we pray together for the different groups in our state. And I really think that the reason that is happening is because of really literally years of praying for that. Amen. That's a great that's a great testimony. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And someone else had a comment. I have a question. Uh, Meryl uh, made three points, and the first one was founded by prayer. What were the next two? Oh, this ministry was founded on prayer, is maintained by prayer, and moves forward by prayer. Did you get hey, that? Thank you. you. Me? Okay. No. Other other comments or questions?
I was just talking to, uh, this is Terry, a uh, gal that's very instrumental on the After Five planning team. And um, we were just discussing how sometimes it's just the same few people and others of the team sometimes don't come, which just seems to be an ongoing issue. But it occurred to me when I talked to the prayer coordinator, I said, do you know why this person isn't coming? I mean, has anyone taken the time to to call them and talk to them? Sometimes we make assumptions that they're they don't want to come or, you know, maybe it's a scheduling conflict or or whatever. So just as we were talking, it just kind of came up that if people aren't coming to pray, so someone, one of the leaders needs to reach out to them and find out and offer to pick them up and you know, really be there and walk with them. It could be something, we have a fairly new Christian on our, couple of new Christians on our team, and sometimes they don't come, and, and it might be because of children or, or something, I don't know, but I think we need to care enough to call and find out, not to badger them, but to find out what we could do to make it more accessible for them um, and make it work for them and find out what we need to do. Maybe it's just a little problem that needs solved to make it able for them to come. Yeah, that's right. In fact, earlier on the call, uh, one of our leaders shared that they do four times a year um, kind of a special prayer event where they'll have a barbecue or they'll have an ice cream social attached with their prayer connection or their prayer time. And this way, it will draw in women who maybe are a little nervous about prayer, but they start to see how oh, this, I can do this. I don't have to be afraid to pray out loud. I can come and be part of this. But they kind of started off four times a year with a little extra something. So, you know, we, we can be creative. Um, it's worth it to help women know uh, that prayer is um, a priority in our lives. And I would say especially, especially persistent prayer. I, I was thinking, Linda, when Linda shared from the Carolinas there, there's a group there that did a Stonecroft Praise group, and they've been praying for three years because that's how long Stonecroft Praise has been around, three, three to four years. And just now they're starting a new outreach from that three years of praying. So, I mean, that's persistence in prayer. So, anyway, someone else want to share? Okay, then why don't we have some time of prayer? We do have a few minutes, and um, uh, I think we've got enough prayer warriors on this phone. If three or four of you would just uh, pray, and then, uh, Meryl, would you close us together now in prayer? Because I don't think we prayed at the beginning. So, yeah, if a few of you would just pray as you feel led, and um, then Meryl can give us uh, our closing. By the way, if you're going to pray, you need to push star six because we want to hear you. So thank you. Lord, I thank you for this evening, and I thank you for the ladies that have prepared to be on this call and for the um, information that was prepared and the um, slides that were prepared on the on the um, web page, and I just thank you, Lord, for the history of prayer in this ministry and for um, so many of us that literally learned how to pray as a result. Um, I thank you, God, that it was in that learning that we were able to share with our kids and our grandkids and, and others um, along the line. And I thank you, oh God, for... Uh, the ways that you answer prayer, the ways that um, that still baffle my mind um, after many years, and that so often it's me that you're changing instead of the circumstances that I'm praying for you to change, and especially in relationships. And so I thank you, O oh God, for the blessing that praying is um, for the bond that it brings women together with. I thank you for uh, the, I thank you, Lord, that you created it and that you ask us to come. You ask us to come and you want us to be in your presence. And that blows me away that the God of creation, the God of everything, 
wants time with us. And so I thank you for that. I thank you for this evening. I thank you for the prayers lifted up from the hearts of these ladies that are on the call and for the ones lifted up this morning. And I praise you, Lord, for what you are going to do and continue to do in and through this ministry. And it is in your precious and powerful name that I pray this in all things. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for those who have gone before us that have taught us. And Lord, we pray you would show us our ten. Show us the women you want us to specifically pour into um, to encourage them in their prayer life and that their hearts would be right with you so that their prayers would be powerful. Lord God, we pray that you would show us if you would have any of us to fast before these events to fast and pray, to open our hands, that you would fill them with your plans. And it wouldn't be our work, but it would truly be your plans, your, your ideas, um, and that we are just your hands and feet here in our different communities. And Lord, I thank you for the dear one whose praise group walks by bars and prays because that's where my son spends his time and I pray that there would be praise walks praying about that bar when they walk by in Jesus name. I praise you Lord because um, of the steady prayer worth repeating and how effective that has been in my life and with our group that um, prayed for our children and and just to get an answer to to the prayer that I had for my son that he get back into church and to hear that he and his wife are now attending church father I just mm -hmm. I thank you for the answer to prayer and thank you for that study we just give you the praise in Christ's name I pray and Lord, I pray that you will help us to persevere in prayer. So often we want instant answers. And sometimes we've heard tonight of prayers that have been prayed for three years. Some have been prayed, we heard of another one, 70 years. And Lord, we tend to give up, but you are always at work. And we thank you for that. And I want to close now with a prayer. I usually don't read prayers, but at this um, little church that I'm attending now in Maine, they use a prayer book and this prayer just really impacted my life the one Sunday morning as we read it together and so I'd like to close uh, with reading um, this prayer. Our God, we come in humility confessing who and what we are. We are often re unresponsive for we are afraid. When your spirit speaks, we turn deaf ears, for we fear what you might call us to do. When your spirit touches our lips, we close our mouths, embarrassed to speak your word. When the wind of your spirit blows, we close the windows of our hearts, afraid the breeze will disrupt our ordered lives. When the fire of your spirit touches us, we quench the flame, afraid of the new life it might bring. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you all. We'll be together next week where we will be um, doing some training on the Stonecroft Bible Study. So if you're interested, please join us next week the same time. Just click the link on the website. And as always, we love you and we thank you for your commitment to this ministry. What a blessing you are to us. Bye-bye.